Good evening and welcome to the extraordinary meeting, called meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd like to start with a roll call, starting at my right by stating your name, please. Uh, Jim Walsh. Len Galino. Jay Chapnos. Mike Trantalio. Gib Mendelson. Uh, we are <clears throat> convening tonight to see, uh, to hear one, one appeal. Uh, I'd like to give a brief background as to the reason why we're calling this special meeting. Uh, the applicants, the Denisons, were uh, applied to have uh, to appear before the board in August. Uh, at, typically, during the summer, we occasionally have uh, members who are on vacation due to one reason or another. Near the end of the school term, we have board members who are on vacation, and, and it's been my experience in the past that occasionally we do have uh, a shortage of members, uh, typically during the end of the summer, and that was the case in August. Uh, we rescheduled the Denisons uh, for the September meeting, and we indeed, indeed had sufficient, more than enough board members uh, that we knew were coming. Uh, one board member had to excuse himself because of a close personal relationship and a close dwelling physical relationship to the applicants, and he had to excuse himself. Another board member at the last moment had a serious illness in the family, and uh, he was unable to attend. So that precluded us from uh, hearing the Denison case for the second time, and for that reason, we. Uh, uh, discussed it among board members and determined to call this extraordinary meeting uh, so that the Denison's applicants would know the disposition of their application uh, and not delay them further. Uh, we uh, appreciate your understanding for this. And uh, uh, so tonight we do have five board members present. Uh, this is a variance that will require four votes in the affirmative for all eight uh, elements of the application to be approved. Uh, not a simple majority of the members present, but a simple uh, majority of the board members uh, uh, voting. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is it's a requirement to give notice for all board members, uh, all board meetings. Uh, we did have uh, we did anticipate that the, that the Denisons would be attending and would be reviewed at the last meeting, uh, and they did uh, attend the meeting, and we feel like that any interested parties, either pro or, uh, or against their application, uh, where notice was already sent out, they were informed and they were aware, since they were anticipating that the Denisons would be uh, uh, reviewed at the last board meeting. Uh, it was announced at that meeting that we would reschedule them for this Monday at 7 o'clock, so we, uh, uh, sufficient notice was given, which is a requirement of the audience. With that prelude out of the way, would one of the uh, applicants please come to the podium, identify yourself? and uh, make your presentation. You certainly may both come. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Brian Dennison. This is my wife, Mary Ann. We're at 1169 Sawyer Road. First of all, I want to thank you for having a special meeting to accommodate our request. Um, if you've all seen the packet, what we'd like to do is construct a 28 by 32 foot garage combination breezeway with a room on the second story. Um, requiring a 15.69 foot setback from the property line. If I may interrupt you, let, allow me to read the uh, uh, item on the agenda for the uh, benefit of the audience here and at home. Uh, to hear the request of Brian and Mary Ann Dennison of 1169 Sawyer Road, tax map R04, lot 57 for a left side property variance of nine 0.31 feet from the required 25 feet to construct a 32 by 28 foot two car garage addition with second floor living space at 15.69 from said property line. Thank you. You may continue. We're not sure what else you'd like to hear. Would you from please me? review your application? Okay. 
uh, describe your intentions. Uh, your uh, own application, there were a number of items that you did fill out. If you would briefly go over those items. Okay, do you want to talk about the application? And, and justify uh, your intent. Please. Okay, the application or the letter that we, the uh, letter of intent, the application. And you can certainly relay information from your letter. Okay, um, on the application it asks for a brief explanation of the scope of work to be done. And as Brian said, we are um, proposing removing a one-car garage and attached mudroom um, that exists right now. These two rooms, um, the mudroom is 16 by 22.5, I'm sorry, the garage is 16 by 22.5 and the mudroom is 8 feet by 15 um, as it stands today. And we are uh, proposing to tear both of those um, structures down with the 32 by 28. I think got that right. Correct. Um, I always mix up the numbers. Addition, that would contain the two garden garage and the mudroom with a second floor living slash recreation room. Um, the next part of the application says the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. Due to the placement of the existing structure, the changes in the zoning ordinance from the original time of construction and the placement of the septic system prevent us from any type of placement of the structure. Uh, the next item talks about the will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use of market value. The proposed improvements will not produce an undesirable effect in our neighborhood or ad adversely affect the use of the market value of the abutting properties. This project will not block any established views. And you could see we have a, we did submit neighborhood endorsements. Um, the next step is the practical difficulties, not the result of actions taken by us or by the prior owner. Um, the variance request is not the result of the actions taken by the Denisons or the previous owner, which was actually Brian's father and mother, um, but rather results of the changes in the ordinance setback since the construction of the garage in the mid-1960s. Um, the original house was built in the mid-1950s, and Brian's father added the garage in the 1960s. Um, there is no other feasible alternatives. We have talked to um, the contractor on several occasions, and with the placement of the septic system leach field, um, we figured this is the only feasible option for us. How long have you lived in the residence? Well, I actually grew up in the residence, and then um, I moved to another spot in town, and then we've been back there about seven years, eight years, I guess. Eight. I was pregnant with Matthew, so about nine years. Um, because what happened was my mother had Alzheimer's, and we put a second story addition on to care for her, and she passed away about three and a half years ago. Are you familiar with um, the septic system, Leachfield? Have you had to replace that or have any dealings with that? Um, I had to have it tested seven years ago. I think it's on file with the town. Uh, before we could proceed to the second story addition. So. You did what, I'm sorry? We had to have it tested for the, with the town. It was a requirement when we put the addition, when we added the second floor eight years ago. So that should be on record in the town of being tested. And Septic it? inspection? Correct. Okay. We didn't, I don't, did we get a copy of that? Or? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so no work has been done on the septic system, you just have the inspection? Well, it has been replaced a number of years ago. I don't have the exact date, but it's not the original, if that's your question. And is it, and the reason why I'm asking this is that, uh, to determine location. Has it, is it going to need to be replaced or, or enlarged for your addition? No. Okay. So no further work has to be done on your septic system? No. And you did look into the possibility of uh, uh, locating the garage to the rear and within conforming setbacks? Correct. Um, what happens is that if, if you refer to the site plan on the location of the septic system, I try and turn the garage towards the back, and then you have to build a driveway. And I think to make it swing in, you'd have to uh, actually be in the neighbor's lawn to get a good swing into the garage. 
or may even be possibly, if you angle it different, it would be closer to the line than we're requesting. Any comments, please, board members? Is this, uh, this is completely new structure, or are you tearing down existing structure? We would be removing the existing single car garage and mudroom slash mudroom. Um, the existing garage has two cracks in the foundation, and the floor needs to be replaced. And how far is the setback on that from? That one is, we're asking for eight more feet than we got, it's 23.69. I'm sorry? It's 23.69, so, so we're... that one's not in conformity either? That is correct. So you're just going, you're asking for, so the actual additional <coughs> encroachment you're asking is about, what, seven, seven feet approximately? Eight feet approximately would Eight. be more accurate. So you'll be removing the, the foundation itself also? Correct. One. And what's the second floor living space that you're creating with this addition? It's going to be probably family room, recreation room. Um, the way the family room it now exists is it's, it was originally a ranch house. So the um, room is fairly small, 15 by 20, something like that. Well, it's not quite that big. I'm not good with the measurements. Um, so we are proposing uh, moving a family room upstairs. We do have two sons, so it would give them extra room for um, friends and so forth. Be doing any enlargement of the primary house? The, the, no. Oh. So the uh, all the construction will be limited to the rod area. Is that correct? Correct. And could you briefly go over your? Uh, comparative measurements and, and describe how you determine the <coughs> side setbacks of your nearest, uh, see that you have 11 uh, uh, comparable properties. Could you describe how you determine those setbacks, please? I'm, I can't You're, quite hear the question. How you, how you determine One of the requirements is a neighborhood comparison of setbacks. Okay. Could you please describe how you uh, determine the existing setbacks and describe your findings, please. From the neighbors, um, some of them I actually measured, and actually I've got a typo in here. I realized that my next door neighbor at 1175 Sawyer Road, the setback is 16 and a half feet, not 22 feet. And as far as the rest Which of them- Which one was that? 1175 Sawyer Road would be my next door neighbor. Okay. And some of these I measured myself, and others were figures that were presented to the board from other neighbors that um, requested zoning board of approval. But if you look at the list, quite a few of them do not meet current setbacks at the present time. And have you discussed this with? There's a sheet showing a number of uh, neighbors. Uh, you just, they're fully aware of what your intentions are? They are. In fact, there's two of them here tonight. And we actually, when we got their signatures, we took the proposed plan with us so they could actually see what we were doing. Okay. Any other questions from board members? Thank you. Thank you. We might call you back further if we have further questions. Now open the floor to anyone in the audience speaking in support of the applicant's uh, variance request. If you would state your name and address, please. My name is Henry Gurney, Jack Gurney, to anybody who knows me. I live at 1175, the property just spoken about. 
The denizens have talked with me at length about what they plan to do, how they plan to do it. If it's going to affect my property value at all, I think it will affect it positively, as three or four other upgrades in the neighborhood have done recently. Uh, I'm certainly hoping that you will act favorably upon their request. It'll do absolutely nothing to our enjoyment or to the value of our property, except maybe positive. Sir, just one question. Yes, sir. I take it you're on the side of the property where the addition's going to go? That is correct, yes. Thank and you. you're how many houses down? I'm sorry? How many houses are you down to? Next to the Dennis. Next, next door. Yes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good evening. I'm Steve LaPlante, <coughs> excuse me, from 1176 Sawyer Road, uh, directly opposite from the Denisons. Um, I've had a chance to speak with them as well as to what their plans are and had a chance to review them. Um, I think that they're in keeping with the character of the, uh, of the neighborhood and it certainly represents an improvement. As for the need for this, the uh, variance, all the homes in that area were built about the same time, late 50s, early 60s. And I think just about, um, there's a grouping of, I think, 14 homes or so, and just about every one of them are into their uh, setbacks under today's uh, zoning ordinance, either through the changes in the ordinance or the, uh, the taking of uh, frontal property but through eminent domain when they widened Sawyer Road. Um, and to that extent, I think it's, uh, like I said, I think it's an improvement. And... Um, it, it uh, gives them an opportunity to uh, house, a, put their cars in the garage uh, for the winter months and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. And for the record, I'd like to, uh, to be pointed out that Steve LaPont is a board member. Uh, I guess technically he should have come up and sat and then excused himself, but for the record, uh, due to his close proximity, he is uh, excusing himself from discussing and boarding, uh, voting on this as a board member. But he is in attendance, and I'd like the record to show that. Any other comments in favor of that? Any comments in opposition? Hearing none, we'll close the floor to uh, public discussion and open it for the board member discussion. As is noted in the application, the, the patient, uh, patient, excuse me, the applicant, victim, <laughs> uh, has a comparable side setback. And it is noted that they have uh, 11 comparable properties. Uh, Looking at side setbacks only, uh, the front setback is not an issue. They appear to meet the uh, comparable setbacks. There are currently a uh, 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 reduction in, in comparable properties. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, of the 11 that stated property neighbors uh, that are less than the required setback of 25 feet. Uh, there's nothing else for they do comment on on the uh, other comparable properties. Other than that, there's nothing of distinction noted uh, in the application. Any other comments from board members?
the uh, in my opinion, the most significant element of eight elements is the uh, comparable properties and the side setback, and, and uh, that appears to be the only uh, issue of relevance in this particular case, and they seem to me to have met that. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the vote. I would like to point out that this is a variance. Uh, there, each of the eight elements has to be approved. Uh, there must be four affirmatives for each element to uh, reach approval. Item number one, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. All those in favor? All in favor and zero opposed. Item two, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item three, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition of the neighborhood. All of those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item four, the granting of variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of budding properties. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. The prat number five, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or prior owner. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item six, no other feasible alternative to the variance is available to the petition. All those in favor? Favor zero opposed. Item seven, the granting of the variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. Item eight, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland areas as described in the ordinance. All those in favor? All in favor, zero opposed. All eight items have been approved. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Um. In the matter of uh, in the application of Brian and Marianne Dennison, who are the owners of property at 1169 Sawyer Road, tax map RO4, lot 57, that their application for a left side property variance of 9.31 feet uh, be approved. So second. All those in favor? All in favor? Your variance has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the board members also for uh, attending this meeting tonight. Thank you very much. Move to adjourn. I have one item I'd like to make Sorry. first, if I could. We won't uh, have any typical communications, but I'd like to repeat what was discussed at the last meeting, and, and that was that we would like to request all board members uh, the week prior to their board, to the scheduled board meeting, or at the time of receipt of your packet. Uh, that would probably be the, uh, the appropriate time to confirm receipt of the pack, packet. If each of you would kindly call in to the uh, code enforcement officer and uh, office and ask, uh, uh, hopefully you'll be able to speak with Lori, our secretary, recording secretary, and confirm or deny that you will be able to attend the, the meeting. So we would like to know in advance two items, that you have received the packet and that you will be able to attend the meeting or not be able to attend. It's quite difficult for Lori to reach each of us because of our varied schedules and, and trips and so on and so forth. So if each of you would kindly call in and, and just report either way. We realize that this is a, a volunteer uh, board, but uh, it is important that we do attend and that we know the attendance in advance. So if, if any comments or discussion regarding that? Email is fine. Email is fine. Email or phone calls, either one. You got my You got my you. No, it might be, uh, might be worthwhile for, 
were alluring to actually email each of us uh, when the packets go out. Uh, that would be I think good. It's, it, it'll, it'll sort of uh, prompt a reply as opposed to our taking affirmative action. That would be relatively easy. The, the other thing is, it, it could, not that it matters, but to, to me, I wondered if I knew who was coming, you know, some, things come up, and to some degree, you weigh that against this other decision, which is to volunteer on this board. And it might be, if we knew that we were the swing vote for a decision, I, I, I just, you know, you come here, I don't know what, whether everybody's coming or not coming, yet things came up this evening, and I basically, I took the, you know, the decision to come here as more important, frankly. But I don't know whether it's, it, there's some way for us to know in advance. I know the chairman knows, but should well, we also? Thing, it would help be helpful for me anyway, as well as if we could have a date by which we're going to get a notice from, from Lori with a listing of who the applicants are, who are the parties before us. Because for me, I have to check the conflicts at work. And it sometimes gets really close when we get the pack to the one we're going to have in the hearing. And, uh, so that would certainly help me run the conflicts. If, if everybody is uh, diligent on checking their email, and it sounds like they are, yeah. and that, then I, I think it would be relatively easy for you to, you would have a preformed list and you send out reply and then confirm to everybody uh, mm. th that we do or how many are attending and, and things of this nature. We would, if, uh, it, it, the town expects us to, to attend all meetings at, at, as part of service on the board. Uh, as long as we know that there is a meeting and, and that then we should always make every effort to attend. And, uh, but I, I agree with you, it'd be good to determine uh, in advance who will be here not to give us an option to opt out, but just so that we would know what we're faced with, both attendance and board members, I agree with that. Yeah, because, I, because what was advertised on the cable last week was the fact that this hearing was held because of lack of quorum in the prior two meetings. And I think it's important that the board itself takes upon its responsibility to have the quorum each meeting. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I just need to know I mean, I, I, I'm oftentimes in other places as well. If I knew that there was one member required, certainly you'd be a little more intent about getting here. I mean, I, I don't know. So, are you looking, I just want to verify whether or not on the Tuesday, we know two weeks in advance what's been submitted. Are you saying you'd like to know that two weeks in advance what will be going? Yes. Yes. Well. And who, who, what? I, I need to know for my, since I'm a practicing lawyer, our firm represents all kinds of parties. They may, we may be representing one of these applicants. Okay. And I, there's, you know, we have 80 lawyers. So the only way I can know that is when I know the names, then I run them through the computer or I send an email around to the firm. And um, so I just need to know who the applicants are. We don't want to make this a burden for you, but uh, as soon as the agenda is nailed down, uh, Instead of sending the agenda, you could send a simple link to the, I'm sure it's posted on the website at that time. Is that correct? I, like I said, I have everyone grouped in one, and it's only for a few other people like email, including the webinars. Right. And that's when all that flashed that, um, that I was saying to you guys was on the email kit. That's when I have other people. I do. I can easily have you guys on my phone in the group with us. How so is it? How soon? Bruce can do it as soon as, like I said, submission date is two weeks prior to the meeting date. But how? He can, if, if he is available in the office, he can do it, you know, in, in an hour, two hours. I mean, because he meets with everyone prior to submission and knows what it's going I think, I think if you could encourage him to, to prepare the agenda as soon after that two week period. And then send that as an attachment. Well, 
Yeah, so we have a calendar we go by. Who makes it gets submitted, and then that one after he typically does do the agenda because I have notices I have to prepare, the legal items to go out. You know, the following Tuesday is when we get the packets together and those get sent. Right. Well, uh, from my standpoint, it's not necessary to know two weeks in advance, but for other board members, it obviously is. Yes. So as soon as the uh, the meeting applicants is closed, then I think it'd be beneficial uh, to just uh, quickly to inform so that conflicts can be researched. And then if, and again, I don't want to make this a burden, uh, help me if this is going to be a burden to troubleshoot this. And then the second item, in, or what the original concept was, when the uh, when we receive the packets, then we could reply yay or nay that we would be able to attend due to, uh, but I, the suggestion was made, if you will, when the packets leave your office, if you will send an email at that time, then we could reply to that just as easily. In other words, a, a notification typically the week before or the Thursday before when your packets go out. If you'll send out that the, the packets have left your office and then uh, uh, at that time, we can reply that yes, we'll be available, or no, we will not, and then arrangements can be made uh, as quickly as possible to uh, uh, deal with a, a lack of quorum. And that was my thought on that one. Okay, if, and that won't be too much of a burden for you. I think that's be helpful, and and then once you do have a headcount. Uh, it would be beneficial to know so that we would know in advance the composition of the uh, I know I like to know uh, and that was very helpful today our our brief dialogue to find out who was going to be available okay any other comment just uh, BTW to the absence and to you I'm sorry for being five minutes later. <laughs> Hearing no further comments, may I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. All those in favor? Thank you.